This video will describe a metal casting process called hot chamber die casting. The process involves injecting molten metal into a steel die, allowing the molten metal to cool and solidify, then ejecting the casting. But first, we'll look at the casting system's main parts. Firstly, the heated crucible. The crucible holds the molten metal that will be forced into the die cavity. The molten metal is called the charge. The crucible is heated continuously to a temperature that melts the charge and keeps it molten. Aluminium, magnesium and zinc are the most commonly used alloys, but other alloys with fairly low melting points can also be used in hot chamber die casting. Molten magnesium alloy oxidizes rapidly in air and can burn explosively. When magnesium is used in hot chamber die casting, it is heated in a sealed crucible covered with a protective layer of gas. The covering gas used has been sulfur hexafluoride, SF6, a powerful greenhouse gas. SF6 has been banned in the EU since 2014, but is still used in many countries. 3M's Novex 612 is an alternative that's claimed to be a safe, sustainable cover gas for magnesium casting operations which has minimal impact on the environment. Next, we'll look at the gooseneck and nozzle. The gooseneck transports molten metal from the shot chamber to the die. A nozzle fixed to the end of the gooseneck connects the gooseneck to the die. The gooseneck and nozzle are heated to ensure that the charge stays molten inside them. Next, the plunger. A hydraulic cylinder forces the plunger down the shot sleeve in the gooseneck. The plunger moves past the shot chamber inlet port, covers it and seals it. The plunger forces molten metal through the heated gooseneck and nozzle with great pressure into the die cavity, then holds the charge under pressure until the casting has cooled and solidified. On the return stroke, the plunger draws molten metal back out of the nozzle and opens the inlet port, allowing the shot chamber to be recharged. Next, the mould or die. The die is a steel mould into which molten metal is injected under high pressure. The die cavity is full of air prior to the molten metal being injected into it. For molten metal to be able to fill the die cavity, air in the die cavity must be pushed out through vents by the molten metal as it moves up the gooseneck and into the die cavity. Or, air in the die cavity must be evacuated using a vacuum system before molten metal is injected into it. The problem with conventional die casting that does not utilize a vacuum system is that air can be trapped in the die or within the molten metal. This trapped air causes casting defects called porosity. A solution to this problem is vacuum assisted die casting. In vacuum assisted die casting, a vacuum pump is used to draw air out of the die cavity. This can happen as the molten metal is being injected into the die or just before the injection starts. The vacuum draws the molten metal into all parts of the die cavity, eliminating the possibility of casting defects caused by trapped air in the die. It also reduces the force needed to inject the molten metal into the die cavity. So, back to the description of the die. After the molten metal in the die has cooled and solidified, the die opens and ejects the casting. The die is lubricated prior to closing, ready for the next casting cycle. So, Back to the hot chamber die casting process and preparing the casting machine parts for casting. Firstly, metal ingots are loaded into the hot chamber die casting machine crucible and heated continuously to a temperature that melts the metal and keeps it molten. Secondly, the gooseneck and nozzle are preheated. Number three, or thirdly, the die is preheated to prevent cracking in the casting. If molten metal would be injected into a cold steel die, the outside of the casting would chill and shrink suddenly, while the inside of the casting would still be very hot. This would result in cracks forming on the casting. Stage 1. A hydraulic cylinder rams the plunger with great pressure and high speed. The plunger shuts off the inlet port and forces molten metal through the heated gooseneck into the die. 
Air in the dye is forced out through vents or is evacuated through vents, chill blocks or vacuum systems. Stage 2. The dye is kept closed under great pressure until the molten metal in it has cooled and solidified. The metal stays molten in the heated gooseneck and nozzle. To prevent the casting from shrinking and forming defects, the plunger maintains a holding pressure on the metal charge until the casting has cooled and solidified. Stage 3. The plunger is raised, drawing molten metal back through the nozzle and gooseneck. The plunger no longer covers the inlet port, so molten metal flows into the shot chamber. The die is opened and the casting is ejected. Stage 4. The open die is lubricated. After lubrication, the die is closed. The die is ready for the next die casting cycle. More metal ingots are loaded into the crucible when needed. The ejected casting still needs to have the sprue removed. If flashing is present, it is also removed, and any defects like porosity or marks left by the ejector pins are repaired. The casting is now ready for use. So, it can be seen that hot chamber die casting is a cyclic process, starting with the plunger forcing molten metal into the die, maintaining pressure until the casting is solid, retracting the plunger, opening the die and ejecting the casting, lubricating the open die, then closing it, ready for the next casting cycle. The plunger forces molten metal into the die. The plunger maintains pressure until the casting is solid. The plunger retracts, the die opens and ejects the casting. The die is lubricated, then closed. The machine is ready for the next casting cycle.